Ciao, my name is Giulia Scarpaleggia. I am a Tuscan born and bred country girl, a home cook, a food writer and photographer. I teach Tuscan cooking classes in my house in the countryside and I've been sharing honest, reliable Italian recipes for 10 years now through my cookbooks and my blog, juicekitchen.com. If you love everything about Italian food, big crowded tables and seasonal ingredients, join us and follow Cooking with an Italian Accent. Welcome to Cooking with an Italian Accent, episode 1. Have you ever considered the impact food has had on our life? Today we'll talk about food memories and how they shape our life. Yes, I wanted to tell you everything about the journey that brought me here, um, how I got from being an employee, unsatisfied with my job, searching for something to commit to, to being an entrepreneur, someone working daily with food, uh, food that is written, photographed, taught, someone who's extremely happy with their life. Where it all began? I thought I'd do it through the first and most important food memories, a travel through time and food, mainly food. Let's start with the first food memory that I have of my life, and it is Brasciolini al Pomodoro. I was probably five years old. I'm sure it was autumn, and it was the day when I came back from the hospital after the adenoid surgery. That day um, marked a change in my life. For the first time, I tasted food. I smelled food. I remember that day. I was sitting at the table in my grandmother's kitchen, and there was a light coming behind me. Uh, there was probably an open door. Gram- Grandma brought to the table a red enamel pan with two handles, and she served me a thin slice of beef. This slice of beef was cooked in a thick, bright red tomato sauce, and she sliced it for me, and I started eating. Nonna, ma che ci ha messo in queste bracioline? I asked her. What did you put in these bracioline? They are delicious. They are so good. I never tried something so good. And I remember that grandma smiled back at me and she said that it was just like the other times. It was me who had changed. And this was the beginning of my love story with food. But now, how are they made? So um, it is a dish that I make often during my cooking classes because these bracioline are the best example of a peasant dish. You take very thin slices of beef and then you pass them first in egg, uh, like a beaten egg, then in breadcrumbs, then again in the egg, then in the breadcrumbs. And all you have to do now is to fry them until golden. Once they're fried, this is not finished, because once they're fried, you cook them again in tomato sauce. And this is how you can multiply your meat, because you start with a very thin slice of beef and you end up with a huge slice of beef that it's like a sponge. It's soaked up all the tomato sauce. And so now it's big and it's uh, something filling and something that will make you happy. So this is something we still do. And I love it because this is my first food memory. The second food memory is a ciambellone. What is a ciambellone? Ciambellone, uh, ciambella is like a donut. So a ciambellone is a big but very simple cake. Uh, It has a ring shape, and we usually have this for breakfast. And I remember that in the same years um, when I discovered my love for food, I was making this ciambellone with my mom every Sunday morning. We would be in the kitchen together. I am sure I was watching a Disney movie, probably it was Robin Hood. And we would make together this ciambellone with a, it was a brownish glass bowl, like there used to be, you know, in fashion in the 80s, and I would probably hold a wooden spoon. And so this was our ritual. And this ritual made me understand how food could be also a way of sharing love, of giving love to someone, giving attention and care. My mom was not a good cook, uh, but I remember perfectly how tea in the afternoon with her would suit all your pain. And she would say that uh, white rice with mozzarella for dinner would solve all the problems. And my favorite, a minestrina, so a very thin vegetable soup for dinner, um, it would warm you inside out. And as she would say, ti abbraccia lo stomachino, so it hugs you from your stomach. So the second food memory, uh, it says that food is love, connection, family, 
and food is taking care of someone you love. And now, the third food memory. This is very 80s, it's an upside down pineapple and cherry yogurt cake. So fast forward a few years, I was at school. I was middle school, high school, university. I was always the one bringing the cake to parties and to gatherings. And it was homemade. There were people bringing focaccia and pizza, taken at the local bakery, ready-made cookies, like in a bag, uh, chips and sodas, but also big salad bowls of pale pasta that was missing more than a bit of dressing. But I would bring homemade cakes, homemade cookies, something homemade. Uh, this pineapple um, upside down cake is, I think you've seen this in 80s photos. Um, there are pineapple slices in syrup and inside the hole there's a candied cherry. And then of course you pour a yogurt cake, you bake it, and when you turn it upside down you have this nice texture on top. Even if I was not the most outgoing person, um, with these homemade cakes, food opened me more than a door, especially at the university. Um, then, at the university, you could always find me in the kitchen during a party. It was my safe place. Um, this is when I understood that food was more than just a person for me. It was a way to have an impact in my life. The fourth food memory is a badano squash risotto. I graduated in media sciences. I was working in an office. I was, you know, dealing with PR or event organization, marketing, and it was not my cup of tea. I would come back from work, open the fridge, and cook with whatever I would find in my mom's fridge. I don't know how many dishes of risotto I made during those years because risotto was my steering therapy. Um, this is also when I started my blog, Jules Kitchen, about 10 years ago because that blog was an outlet for my creativity and my passion for food, a way to commit to something that would matter in my life. I remember I was working on my recipe for a butternut squash risotto, and I was the, the first one who had introduced a squash in my house, in my family. As my mom, you know, I told you, she, she was not a great cook, and she, mostly she didn't like uh, butternut squash. So I remember I was reading at the blogs and finding recipes with squash and I said, okay, I will try. So I bought this butternut squash and I tried making a risotto and I was trying and trying and trying to make the good recipe. This is how I fell in love with its sweet and delicate taste. So my risotto was orange, it was creamy, it was smooth and there, was some cr there were some crunchy seeds on top. So this told me that food could be also a therapy. Uh, food was a way to free myself and to assert myself. And food is so much fun too. And here we are, the fifth memory, nudie. <laughs> this is a strange word, I know. I will tell you more about nudie. But that was the beginning of summer 2010. I had started the blog for, I think, slightly more than one year. And I was stuck in a daily job that uh, I really didn't like. I was still living with my parents um, and my family was renting the house where I now I live. And there was an American couple, a very nice American couple, and they asked me if I knew someone teaching cooking classes. So I'm always slow to recognize opportunities. They often pass by like high speed trains, but that day, that day I caught my train. So I said, of course, I do cooking classes. If you want, I can come and teach you a cooking class. That was my very first experience with a cooking class. Um, and I was pretending I was, you know, sure and confident, but that was really my first chance teaching something to someone, teaching cooking to someone. So I was trying to decide the menu and I picked a tiramisu because tiramisu is a family recipe and every family in Italy has its own recipe for this one. And then I picked nudi. Nudi in Tuscan means naked. So nudi are the filling of the ravioli without the outside pasta, like naked ravioli. They are called also malfatti, which means badly made, because one is different from the other. So the problem 
is that probably um, I had made nudie a couple of times in my whole life. So I was not sure about the recipe and I still don't know why I chose that recipe. There's a crucial moment when making nudie because when you pop them into a pot of boiling water, they can either flow to the top or they can dissolve and, you know, they become a mushy mass that you really don't want to eat. So that day I was there looking at the pot of boiling water, hoping that they would come on top, that they would flow to the top. And after a few seconds, the nudie crowded the surface of the pot. So I had succeeded in preparing the first meal during a cooking class. That dish gave me enough confidence to hope that I could make it. So in December 2011, I left my daily job and I ventured myself into this new life. And the rest is history. This was my life in five food memories. Of course, there are more. I remember the first pasta I cooked for my parents when I was about 12. It was with smoked salmon and cream. Um, I remember the first gelato we had with Tommaso during our first date in Florence. I remember oysters and stout at Borough Market in London. There are many memories related to food. I'm sure that if you look back at your life, you can find many food memories. And I'll be curious to hear something about this. What is important, though, is that food has always been an important part in my life. When I started my blog, I decided to start a food blog, not because I wanted to change my life and to find a new job in food. I started my food blog because food was important, because I had realized throughout my life that food was a way to communicate love, a way to uh, tell someone that it was important, a way to um, free myself, a way to find my place in the world. So this was quite natural. In 2009, 10 years ago, I started my blog and the blog was about food. Is this the same for you? Is food a powerful force in your life? I'm sure that if I if I ever write a memoir, food would be the perspective through which I can tell my life. Which would be yours? Which is your biggest passion? Is it food? Is it Italian food? Is it, I don't know, history or literature or Italian culture? I'm just curious and I would love to hear more from you. In this podcast, we'll talk about Italian and Tuscan food. I mean, I love sushi. Tommaso knows it's very expensive to bring me out for dinner to eat sushi. I love British pies and cakes. I love Middle Eastern food and all the vegetables and the hummus and the eggplants. But I want to talk about Italian Tuscan food, because this is what I cook every day, this is what I eat every day, this is what I teach during cooking classes, and this is also the food I was born into. When we plan a family gathering, the first thing that we plan is the menu. Who's going to make fresh pasta? Who's going to bring the chicken liver crostini? And who makes the cake? That's me usually. So food is so important, not just in my life, but also for, for the whole family. Food is something that brings us together. So this is why Tommaso and I were so eager to do this podcast to talk about Tuscan and Italian food, to share it with you and to bring you into our kitchen and our pantry. Word of the day. Learn the Italian language of food word after word. Every year, more than 200 people join our cooking classes. So speaking with them, I made a small dictionary of important words and pronunciations that can help you navigate through the immense world of Italian food. So if you love Italian language as much as you love Italian cooking, these are a few words that can be useful for you. Today's word is nudi. How to spell it? G-N-U-D-I. Nudi. In Italian language, G-N is pronounced N. It is not GN. So for the same reason, you would say Gnocchi and not Gnocchi. 
So this is the end of the first episode of our podcast, Cooking with an Italian Accent. I'd love to hear from you which is your most vivid food memory. And you can share it with me via email or with a post or a story on Instagram using the hashtag Cooking with an Italian Accent and tagging Jules Kitchen. Also, from the next episode, I will answer listeners' questions about Italian and Tuscan cooking. So if you have a question in your mind, just email me at jules at juleskitchen.com or join our Facebook group, Cooking with Jules Kitchen. I'll answer your questions at the end of each episode. Thanks for listening to Cooking with an Italian Accent. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes or wherever you are listening to a podcast. Rate and review the show. It will help us to be found online and build up an appetite for Italian food. Share with your friends too. Don't forget to visit juleskitchen.com for more information and to discover new stories and recipes from Tuscany. Ciao!